Hello and welcome to episode three of Ed Venturing. I'm gonna try and keep this introduction as short, sweet and snappy as I possibly can, because apparently if there was one complaint to be made about episode two, is that the opening was too long, rambly and slow. Episode three sees me ascending Bow Fell, a little hill in the South Downs, which got its name because the forests that it ascends out of are full of yew trees, which were used to make bows in the 14th century. Bows that were used to kill Vikings, Vikings that are said to be buried at the top of the hill in barrows known as the Devil's Humps. You'll find out all about it in the show. It's a little hill. It's a very handy one. This is not a massive expedition. It is the perfect introduction to hill walking. If you're thinking of giving it a go, this is the ideal one to start on. And the reason I know this is because it was the perfect introduction for my guest on this episode, the American stand-up comedian, Desiree Birch. You may know Desiree from her appearances on <gasps> Live at the Apollo, QI, Have I Got News for You, The Jonathan Ross Show, Frankie Boyle's New World Order. Basically, name something that has comedians on it, and she's been on it. But she was also one of my fellow contestants on Celebrity Best Home Cook. She went home first. Somebody had to. Like most comedians, Desiree's not really up to very much at the moment, much like myself. However, if you want to know what she's going to be doing in the future, if you fancy going to see her live, check out our website. There's a link down below. So that's it. That's really all I have to say, apart from the usual thing of, you know, like, subscribe, do all that stuff if you haven't done it already. And please enjoy me going up Bow Hill with Desiree Birch. That wasn't too bad, was it? Thanks for inviting me on your adventure. <laughs> that's so cute. I can't. <laughs> Desiree has just asked me the difference between hiking and hill walking. Yes. So we're not dealing with a mountain woman here. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining and I almost went back home. And by home, I mean to America. So yeah. <laughs> so wait, what makes something a down? Oh God, don't be asking me just technical <laughs> things like that. We're going up a down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to be asking you everything. Oh, yeah. To and do what's with nature? between a hill and a mountain? That's, <laughs> and that's always an awkward one because there really isn't one. <laughs> like, I guess there's probably a transition as to when you need, like, gear. Like, besides the shoe, you know, like when you need, like, well, grappling yeah. hooks well, or something. Well, because then there's, there's hiking or stroke hill walking. I guess they're interchangeable. And then you go, the next step is scrambling. Oh. Which is when you're using your hands you as well and hand. you're climbing up rock. But, but you like generally... You made that official. Scrambling. Scrambling, like, yeah. That's the, that's the, that's that shouldn't the, be the plan. That's the halfway house between <laughs> hill walking and rock climbing. Climbing, yep. Okay. Got All it. of which could be considered mountaineering. Oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but not by people who are rock climbers. They say that that's ju that's only that is mountaineering. If, oh, you're, okay. if you're just on a mountain and well, you're not roped up, you're not mountaineering. Mountaineering, you're just hiking. Yeah, and you're certainly not climbing. Climbing, Don't um, yeah. Because if so, you'd be part of the club and you'd be paying your dues. Yeah. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> Don't ever say you enjoyed a nice climb if all you did was walk up. Because hill, hill, uh, rock climbers will get really annoyed with you for that. <laughs> We're coming to a kissing gate, oh. but... I don't know between, how your wife's going to feel about this. Between Me Too and COVID, I'm not going to uh, press the issue. Even try. Oh, I see. Au revoir. Au revoir. That poor gate's been through a lot, though. <laughs> Felt up all day. <sighs> it doesn't already feel like the wilderness now. Oh, Josh. Even the difference in people's clothing. Back there was Wellington boots. <laughs> well, yeah, I see all the it, shoes. And exactly. it was walking boots and birdhouse hey. jackets. It's really not a massive hike we're doing anyway. You keep saying that, and really when I'm not. passed out <laughs> panting against a rock, it's going to be really different. <laughs> this really isn't massive. I'm like, I, medevac, please. <laughs> but you go places like in the Lake District and stuff. Quite some quite serious mountains. Okay. In the snow, and you still meet people in jeans and trainers or and people just in like overcoats and they look at you like you're an arsehole yeah you're because you're geared up and, and they're like what are you doing up. you're like not you ruining know? my feet yeah. knees back and but everything else these people they made it i i remember one time doing an article for a magazine about navigation where i was learning skills and that so i'm just out with this guy and we're we've got map we've got compass but okay. we're walk we're like we're somewhere like this 
yeah. where there's just loads of people out walking their dogs and everything like that. <laughs> and you're tracking, and you're we're looking like, at crushed yeah. twigs. And and we just look like a, the biggest pair of losers because we're trying to, because there's a sign. It's you're like that way. tasting the dirt and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously though. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a city kid. I have to remember that like nature exists. <laughs> I love it. It's hugely important, but I just easily forget. What city are you from? I'm from LA-ish. Yeah. Um, so I'm from the suburbs to be honest, but I've lived everywhere I've lived has been city, city, like LA, New York, yeah, yeah. London, you know. But the US has some amazing scenery. That's true. And generally not that far out of its hmm. cities either. That's true. That is true. Yeah. Or like, no one in my family was doing anything out in nature. Yeah. Like, we're fighting to keep a roof over your head. Why do you want to go camp? Like, what yeah. the heck's wrong with you? So it was just not, you know, it yeah. took well into my adulthood to have, like, friends who were like, we're going to go out and do it. And you're like, okay, I guess. And then you go, oh, this is really wonderful. Mm. Um, thanks for introducing me to, like, the world that we live in. <laughs> <laughs> I love going into outdoor shops in, in the States and in Canada because they're, they're, Massive. Yes. There's, and it's like the whole outdoors is, is there for you. Yes, and you can conquer it. Yeah. If you buy something here. Yeah. For and, sure. And enormous and it's amazing like gear. That you, and because also, you know, it, I mean, people are into it here, but in North America, particularly, that whole van life, car camping sort of yeah. thing yeah. is massive there. So, so enormous things that you don't have to carry that can go in, that will go in the back of your enormous yes, pickup. vehicle, yes. That you, uh, that you can also live in. Fridges yeah. and mm -hmm. cookers and dehydrators and all. And then <laughs> racks and racks of guns. <laughs> yep. so just, in I case you they... encounter something out there besides your friend nature. <laughs> yeah. Right? Or actually, <laughs> in case you encounter nature. <laughs> It's just that added, uh, added department to the outdoors. You don't know if you don't see that in a branch of Cotswold, you know, AR-15. <laughs> yeah, <lined> exactly. <laughs> now, I'm not telling you how to live your life, Renton, but I don't think you need that hood up. <laughs> I think the weather's you don't paired know. up quite nicely. I'm trying to be out here blending <laughs> into nature. Do you know what I mean? It's not raining because the hood is up. <laughs> What's this cool little thing? An information, information. point. No, I mean this thing. Find information for us. To Kingly Vale. See? Yeah, piece That's of piss. not piss. too hectic, Look is at it? that. Do not follow the sheep. Bow Hill, there we go, right there. So, Wait. There we go. See, we've walked this far. That's okay. where we're we we parked. Actually, that, we're parked down here. That? We're not going all the way. No, no, we're just, we're just going up the Ow. hill. See? It's, okay. It's easy. All right, that is that. That is nothing unless there are some surprises in there. That's pretty much nothing. That's very cute. All right, yeah, I'm gonna look out for gonna... this common rock rose because, you know, that's my friend. Well, we should ex <laughs> experience the contrast between the deep dark shade of the yew woods, yew woods, yew wo yew woods. <laughs> the hot sunny exposed mm -hmm. chalk. <laughs> <laughs> I miss life. Well, it's yew okay. trees. I mean, you've got uh -huh. to, you know, um, exposed chalk grassland, teeming with wildflowers and insects. I, I mean, teeming with insects is a big, is a big, is a big, oh big my selling God, point, isn't so it? So many beetles. Lol. <laughs> you may find up to 50 different plants in a single square meter of grassland. Most of them grasses. <laughs> and the reserve boasts 39 of England's 58 species of butterflies. Oh, well, Come not on. in late October. Well, <laughs> I should see. hope not, unless there's one really lost, sad butterfly, mm -hmm. in which case. The Vale's woodland, grassland and scrub are a living link to a landscape shaped by successive generations, winning a living, winning a living from the thin chalk soils. Wow. That's a great phrase, isn't these, it? Yeah, like, exactly. Really... Like, these are like a uh, little dust bowl, air, like... <laughs> Grassland, whatever, and they scrub. Beat the ground ugh, into a farming. Every day, just ugh, eking out some sunshine and chlorophyll. Okay. Did, we, uh, did you get some plants, darling? I did. Well, we're ahead of the game. <laughs> this is just like a stroll in a park. Yeah. Says the woman who hasn't done it yet. Well, once yeah, once we get through, we'll we'll we will be striking out for higher ground. Shortly. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Oh my God! There was a fork in the wood. Um, do you know where we're going here? Please help us, Lil. Okay, I'm following you. I don't know. I forgot. I forgot. We want a bear right. Okay. Such a cute backpack. 
you know the best thing about this backpack? What? The, oh, and it turns into a, oh. It's, it's, it's a seat. Oh my goodness, for your sort of traveling bard, Johnny Appleseed yeah. future of roaming the woods and regaling butterflies and insects with tales of the <laughs> <laughs> times gone by. Okay. They are quite cool looking trees. Yeah. The way they twist and uh, yeah. bend low to the ground like they that. They got a character. They've uh, been through some stuff. I mean, I always find the going up is hard, but the going down is quite hard. That's very true. A lot of people <laughs> underestimate that. <laughs> Should have bought my poles. Walking poles, a lot of people swear by them. I'm not a fan myself. Yeah, I do. I don't know. I would not have definitely not have gotten up that mountain in Peru without those things, and I certainly wouldn't have gotten down afterward. So what mountain in Peru did you climb? Or walk oh. up? Walk I up, that's not, that's not annoy the rock climbers. <laughs> yes. What, what mountain I in Peru up, did you ascend? Well, they were stairs, so I went up Machu Picchu, like you do. How long ago? This was a year and a half ago, almost two years ago. Right. Um, yeah, and um, it was really my kind of main only experience with like um, really big hill walking. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, if you can walk up the steps to Machu Picchu, then Bow Hill in the South Downs should be <laughs> Should be a okay. Piece of this is cool. None of my other comedy friends take me hill walking. <laughs> Have you got a slight limp on you? Yeah. What's that from? <laughs> that's just, uh, ow, that's from fucking this knee up like 20 years ago. What did you do? Oh, uh, drunkenly jump slash fell off of a fucking 15 foot wall. <laughs> Cause college. Uh, I look back and I'm surprised at how Unscathed I was from my uh, <laughs> from your young adventures? drinking days. Yeah. Oh, after you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought if you go first, then you can dictate the pace. Oh, gotcha. No, no, that's fine. I'd prefer you to feel guilty. These are cool trees. <laughs> they are, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Finally getting reception. <laughs> Rocking. You can see why they make uh, bows out of this. Oh, yeah. That's true. This is quite otherworldly, isn't it? Yeah. That's where they shoot those, like, I don't know. All the TV shows they're making now about iridescently see through people. Yeah. Who, like, you know, I don't know. I think you See, need is that, ears to survive. Is that one of those tree creepers? <laughs> oh, wow. You know, it starts in the tree you know, and then goes right. down. And it whips through here. Yeah. And it makes you, so is this like a weird parasite yeah. that isn't part of the tree? Yeah. They come out of bird poo. They get really? Up in the tree. Yeah, they, yeah, the birds eat the seeds and then they them into the tree and then, and then yes. it sprouts and then it creeps down the tree. Got it. Well, I guess that's pretty much how everything gets passed along. <laughs> a journey through shit is Bird shit and that thing, yeah. You know, tale as old as time and all that. <laughs> if we didn't wash them, our cars would be the next evolutionary yeah. step. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Oh, it's really starting to come Good down Yeah. That's why the hood was up. Yeah, now, the, now, well, now you must press the hood into service. <laughs> oh, right. So how many seconds since I put it on? <laughs> and the sun is coming out. Yep, yep, my, yeah. my waterproof's definitely made it stop raining. <laughs> Thank you for your sacrifice. <laughs> I think we're gonna get a good, we're get gonna a get a good look back here. A little view. Here we go. Just a little while ago, we were down here. That's quite something, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's pretty great. That would be uh, Portsmouth over there, I think. Yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah, Portsmouth that way, Bognor Regis that way. Okay. What the heck happens in Bognor Regis besides that name? Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a funny old name, isn't it? It's pretty, pretty intense. It's one of those names that I always just think of as 
it, it's just a name that gets mentioned a lot in like sitcoms. It's fun to say. You know? Yeah. Next next year we're gonna bug her. Yeah. It's like in America where people say like Sheboygan or Schenectady and it's yeah, like no yeah, one's it's like, doing anything we're there. Supposed to, just, yeah. We're supposed to divine something from that? Uh, no, <laughs> no, not at all. Half an hour ago, we were just where those people are down there who were walking down there. Which people? When we, we, when we went, we, are we going left or right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. said, well, we'll come down that way and we'll that. go up this way. Yeah, yeah, That's you're right. We were just that down there. That not long ago, to be yeah. honest. Where should we sit? Um, let's find a dry pan. You up can sit in my bag if you like. Down. Here. I'm just looking at the, they appear to be pushing a pram stroller. Yeah, which is, say. yes. I don't think they, they're going to have some trouble when happening. they get to the bottom of it. But I mean, maybe that's already a decision to be like, you know what, that's as far as we need yeah. to go. Anyway, Desiree. <laughs> yes, Ed. Looking out up the beautiful south coast of England, do you ever think, how the hell did I end up here? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I don't know, it's just nice to see as many uh, seas as possible. Mm -hmm. I always love that. It's just like, I gotta drink all of that in, even though it all blurs into one memory of like, pretty. Well, let's go back to the beginning. The very beginning? That's not, I was that's not too conception or anything like that. <gasps> dog! Oh, dog! Oh my god, dog! <laughs> <laughs> Is, yeah. Does he have an equity card? Uh, Will he sign a release form? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this um, is definitely qualifying, you know. <laughs> so did you start off in comedy stateside, or did you start No, I, sta I started off in the States. Um, started off, I mean, in New York, I, not counting college, because everybody did a gig there. That wasn't a real gig. Really? Um, is, that a, is that a standard thing these days? No, when you're like, kind college, of. It's like somebody's like, oh, we're putting on a comedy night. And it's basically like, you know, I don't know what background you came from, but my comedy's quite storytelling. So, mm -hmm. And I came from a theater background. So like my first stand-up had like a printed script. Do you know what I mean? Like that's so not the did, way that I do that. So you did you did theater studies then? Yes, at I did. Right. Yeah. So we we could argue that it started there. Yes, sure. No, I mean if it if we we could argue that it started from watching. Let's like, just argue. Why not? Yeah. We're on a hill already. <laughs> I'll um, boot your ass down this slope. <laughs> a good anything to get me down faster. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I watched stand up on TV in high school and was like, oh that. You know, like mm -hmm. do you you know you have sure. those moments where your higher self just goes there, there. go. You. Who now. would you have watched growing up then? I as mean, a kid? he who must not be named. I like I definitely remember seeing a, a Bill Cosby special really early. Okay, on. yes. Yeah. Right. So sorry, uh fill in somebody cooler. I don't know. Put, no. in, put in Richard Pryor, if he says that, it's fine. It's cool. But yeah, I think he, his was like the first one that was like a storytelling stand up thing that I was like, Whoa, that's cool. And then, you know, I grew up in like the eighties and nineties, so like when they showed um like Caroline's, you know, and Annie, it would be Oh, like, that's the, the the comedy club in New York. Yeah, right, so but yeah. like it would be like Elaine Boozler and Emo Phillips yeah. and Judy Tenuta and like, you know. Judy Tenuta, I'm not familiar with. Yeah, she had an accordion. Okay, <laughs> she would make noise, she was like, ah! <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, like, it was just sort of Apollo Poundstone. She, yeah, she was, yeah, I feel I like she her, was yeah. born on a brick wall. You yeah. know, it was like. I say I remember her. The, she's still going. She's still yeah, going. Sorry, but I remember. Yes, being, you know, but like that. I watched early on, yeah. Yeah, that era of stand up, yeah. you know, and just sort of having an understanding that that was a thing in a way people conducted themselves and made a living and made themselves relevant. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think, uh, I guess I found theater in high school and just sort of, it was the first time I felt any kind of belonging whatsoever on this planet, you know? And, yeah. Yeah. And so, where, did you, where did you go to college then? Uh, I went to Yale. For and what year are we talking now that you would have been in I graduated Yale? in June of 2001, just months before 9-11, because okay. my life was destined for import. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> I moved to New York, and then everything was like, well, I guess everybody feels fucking confused, right. so here we all are. So, in the early aughts, yeah. as you guys call it. The aughts, or the, I like the knots, I like the naughties. <clears throat> you moved to New York, armed <laughs> yes. with your theater degree. Yes! <laughs> In a well, this is dreams. a town that needs to love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is, you know, if you graduate with a theater degree and go to New York, you quickly mm. find out that you are not doing anything remotely <laughs> like the theater. Yeah. You know, like, because you're making up theater with your friends. You're not getting cast in anything because unless you sing or you're already a Hollywood star, you're not doing that shit. Right. So, you know. You so where quickly, would have been your stomping ground? What would have been the sort of the clubs where you would have cut your teeth? All of the sort of then? downtown. Well, so, like, I was mostly actually a solo performer. Like, in New York, people know me more for theater and solo performance than they do for comedy. So what was, the, what was your first one-woman show then? What was it called? Um, 
<laughs> it was called Greatest Hits because why not start with a compilation album? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, like, you know, and I took that to uh, Dixon Place um, in New York, which is like, you know, downtown. So everything would have been 14th Street and below. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, PS122 and Here Art Center and, uh, you know, under St. Mark's and um, it's just a bunch of other places that are like, you know, if you read anything about like alternative New York theater, you'll read about those places. But other than that, like, you're not going to have heard of them. But like when you're there, mm -hmm. having a show go up at PS122 is a big stonking deal. Like, right, you know, okay. even though it's a theater that was converted from a school, do you know? Um, but uh, yeah. And then so like comedy wise, it, <laughs> I mean, I definitely done a bringer show at Caroline's, you know, where you have to bring 10 to 15 people in sure, order to get yeah. a spot. Like that was what you start doing. But like, but uh, yeah, so like uh, the places that I really did a lot of comedy, because there was like, there are lots of little like Gotham Comedy Club and whatnot, like yeah. a lot of little ones. There are lots of places that like don't exist anymore. You know, there were places like Comics and Mo Pickens and like places that were bars that like got started up and everybody had a hot idea in like the noughties and then it didn't last. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I get the impression that in New York, there was even within the city, there were different or there are different sort of scenes. Yep that you were, yep. you were a catcherizing star guy, yeah. or you were a comedy seller guy, yeah. or you yeah. were a strip comic. A comedy you know comic strip, I mean? yeah, exactly. You know, is that, is that's that, is that, that's that, was true, that still the I case think. when you were? Yeah, I think so, but like we were all sort of on the alternative, alternative scene. So right. we were like in places in fucking Brooklyn and shit. But like those are places that people like, um, like, like Eugene uh, Marmon and, and yes, that exactly, Nick Kroll yeah, yeah. and like Kristen Schaal and Carbono. Like yeah. those kids, the, like those were the spaces that we were in more so than the sort of like I'm at Danger Fields, you know, or whatever. Sure. Yeah. I mean, particularly because you know they took a lot longer to understand that like one woman on the bill wasn't gonna fly. Right. You know, whereas in the alternative scene, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like should we get a lady out here, guys? You know, <laughs> like, so you know, like just that and uh, was yeah was like a huge deal. Um, but yeah, there's that whole sort of around the the comedy cellar where it's this like the bitter end and Boston Comedy Club. Mm -hmm. which is right at West 4th Street in the fucking village of New York. I don't understand. Yeah, but I like, never understood why that was called the Boston yeah. <laughs> Don't that get was, it. Uh... I mean, it's just like, okay, does anybody here give a shit about us? Like, let's call it Go Sox. <laughs> um, but anyway, like, um, all along that strip, you know, like, yeah, I'd spent some time there, but not a whole heck of a lot. I really focused more on theater because I was like, which one of these will leave me the poorest? Let's find out. Hmm. Well, and also I was always too dirty to be a club <laughs> comic, so there's that. that um, yeah, that was one thing that really struck me. That idea that you had to be do a clean act. Yes, if you say one fuck, there's going to be a group of people waiting out backstage for you when you leave or some yeah. shit. Like what? So, so yeah. how long were you there, there for then? I lived in New York for 13 years. Okay. Uh, so I yeah, and I did a shit ton of theater and some comedy, but like I was never going out three plus nights a week doing okay. gigs or anything like that. It was really translating everything I was able to do to this country where it's like, well, comedian is a job that pays. And what prompted the move here? Oh, you know, a dude. Oh, was it as simple yeah, as that? Yeah, it was that simple. Wow. I'm a simple bitch. I don't know why that's, I, I don't know why I'm disappointed. Because <laughs> we were like, oh, you like it better here than in the States? And it's like, yeah, but like you guys see what's on TV and yeah. you think those are comedians. There's like thousands of comedians yeah. like paying to do gigs. Yeah. Like underneath at, that. At circuit level. Yes. It's, it's, for a long time, it's been, a, it's been a, a lot easier to make a living here. Yes. Than, than in, in the States. If you want to like pay your rent or a nice little mortgage and like work around a country, and this is great. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I wound up moving here to, to be with the dude and you know, I stayed for the career. Um, and Come for the dick, stay yeah. for the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my new single is dropping on Tuesday. That's, I think, you, I think, I think uh, the UK should think of that as a tourist slogan, uh -huh. as, a, as a recruitment. <laughs> but like in the Queen's voice, <laughs> come for the dick. Stay for the money. Oh, sorry. I believe the children are calling the Skrilla. <laughs> Make your paper. <laughs> so 
So, uh, d did you hit the ground running then when you arrived? Yeah, yeah, because I came here without the, like, when I got a visa, it was to be a comedian and a performer. That was the only way I so could work for So the only thing you were allowed money. to do. Yes. Right. So and that lights I, a fire under your eyes. Of course, arse, because, well, yeah. I mean, one, on the one hand, for the first time, you have completely, like, you don't have one or two jobs before you go and do comedy. So yeah. you have time to do all of the focus that you really didn't have time before. And on the yeah. other hand, you're like, I never wanted to be dependent on another human being, and that's the position I've thrown myself in too so let's mm -hmm. scramble the hell out of that so yeah i had i had a massive sort of fire under my butt about just getting out there and getting gigs and doing the competitions which is not even a thing that anybody in america understands that you have yeah, a comedy that's, that's competition not a thing over there no not really i mean i'm guessing maybe it happens somewhere but it's just kind of like i don't know if it's the basic idea of like how can you compare yeah you know i mean obviously there was stuff that's on tv like reality shows and stuff but before sure. that there was never any sort of like you just like there's different comics for different stuff, but That's here it's surprising. Like, yeah. I guess I always think of Battle of the Bands being a very common thing, particularly in America. Yeah, yeah for, you're right. When it comes to music, and so. just like who rocked hardest? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's easier to quantify the amount of rock that comes from a band. Yeah, exactly. Than the amount of funny. You pull from out a the meter, right? But I guess yeah. you could do the same for comedy, right? I guess I just I'd never encountered it, and yeah. maybe it does exist. I remember seeing this amazing play; it's beautifully done, and it was like it was like about Tyson, Mike Tyson, and Muhammad Ali, and as like being like two of the greatest boxers or whatever, and like quotes from them and talking about boxing. But they were like, you know, when I'm in the ring, like I don't hate the person I'm fighting. That person's my friend. That person's the <laughs> only person who understands where my head and where my, everything is at right now you know and we're doing this dance together but like you know and it's the audience and it's people like doing this but that is the only other person who knows exactly where I am in this moment and I feel like you know it's similar with comedy it's like it, there is there is a fight going on when people are like are you excited are you having fun and you're like fuck you like I'm trying not to die that's it like what we're doing is severely unnatural and I go out there and I don't know why I'm fucking compulsion to go out there and be like do you love me Ugh, you know and yeah. so like no it's not exciting like afterwards you're like yeah I'm buzzing and that's how I know I have an addiction but like <laughs> do you do you have a sense at all of when you were starting out particularly or when you were starting here of a sort of gladiatorial thing between comedian and audience because for, for me the reason I ask is I, I always remember distinctly when I was starting out but that was in the 90s mm. and 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 comedy had a tendency to be quite aggressive mm. and it was and there was that uh, you gotta grab those people by the balls and all that and then it was my first real taste of it was in the states in those alternative rooms yeah where everything was a lot more convivial and yes. the audience had a far more nurturing sense about yeah them. and everyone wanted to go out there and be the weirdest fucking yeah. non-relatable person yeah like, i want them to not laugh at me for the first seven minutes yeah. <laughs> and are, like, well, are you aware of there is do you feel like there's still a, a divide like that in different kinds of clubs I, I feel like the gladiatorial thing is maybe diminishing a bit just because mm. there's a little bit more mm. of a sort of, there are various kinds of alternative whatever the heck. Like, I I don't know. I think when I started out, like, yes, I do need to get them on side early and quick and then not let them go. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the I guess the further that you sort of develop in this, the more you kind of go like, I it can't it can't just always be that, you know, like there, there has, there have to be different days. There have to be different levels in mm. there. And I have to try to find them as opposed to going to the same place all the time. Cause that's just death. I, I would like to think and imagine that you need different tones. You know, it's like, you don't want your opener, your middle and like your closing act to all like play the same song, or sure. you know, like, so was there an alternative scene when you were coming up in the nineties in comedy? I, well, in, in, in the UK, we'd had the sort of split between mainstream and, and alternative a lot earlier. Got it. Where, you know, mainstream was mother-in-law jokes. Yes. You know, racist yes. jokes. That sort of thing. Exactly. My girlfriend. Yeah. All the time you're like, you have a girlfriend? Yeah. Which is weird because <laughs> because other comedy existed. The observational comedy existed. We had we had Dave Allen. We had Jasper Carrot. We mm -hmm. had Billy Connolly. We had all that yeah. as well. But there was still, when that split happened with the comedy store and all that, where really it became that more American observational style. Mm. Uh, that... That was called alternative comedy then. Gotcha, okay. And so to then call it, it took a while, I think, before people started referring to the more kooky mm -hmm. stuff as, for yes, want of a yeah. better word, alternative. So it's, but I just think it's, it's an interesting thing. I, I feel like in the exact same way that the likes of Jim Davidson or Bernard Manning would look at me and go, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see him do such and such working, working man's, man's club. Working man's club, you know, yeah. I, I will sometimes find myself guilty 
of going, of enjoying an act, but still find myself going, yeah, but I'd like to see how they did Late Show, Battersea Junglers. You know what I mean? Mm, gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> Late Show. Late I don't Show, know. Battersea Junglers, That's a club that no longer exists. So, so <laughs> specific. And it was definitely never in my um, experience personally. So, I, but yeah, I don't. Well, I mean, I don't know. Can, can you really be guilty of, like, enjoying a comic? I don't know. I mean, maybe you can, but I tend to be like, I'm, I don't know. If it's funny, that wins. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. We've now I think, I think I'm this, jealous. Like, That's what it is. I think that's what it is. It's yeah, a I, I think it's I just a generational... I enjoy watching people who, because of the, the, the nature of the clubs they came up through, yes. that it, they were able to flourish and do something that was beyond comedy and was more interesting and, and you know, and could take you on a, but I on think a bit a more of a journey. a lot of us are jealous of that. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I maybe have benefited from some of that, but then at the same time, I'm kind of like, I don't necessarily have the leisure of like other kinds of performers who are kind of like, you know, like I feel like if you're a 20 something, like, you know, cisgendered man who's just come out of college, mm -hmm. like, yeah, maybe you're like, oh, it's no fear for me. But at the same time, you can do any kind of weird thing you want mm -hmm. because the ground has sort of been laid. You right. know, like I've, I've talked to Nish before about like how it's like, yeah, we don't really get to tell jokes about like garlic bread and Pokemon because like there is always like something political and some other kind of issue that like is going to intersect your life that you are kind of like, everyone's like, well, when are you going to talk about that? So, you know, I think that, that, um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I think you're always going to kind of look at somebody and be like, I'm, I envy the space that you've had to kind of flourish unburdened by something. But then it's like, I don't know. All those things made us who we are and made us uh, have careers even now. Because no one needs to hear that dude talk about Pokemon right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoops. Why, why are you so down on Pokemon? Huh? I don't know. It's just, I really wish I had like a hot, like type five on Pokemon or something. <laughs> It would be so great because no one would see that coming. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I mean, okay, maybe this is just perspective, but it looks fucking it's huge. It's a pretty big cat. They are pretty big. But you know what? I mean, they're not, they're not grown to, to not be big. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess not. They've already got the sections marked out. Why are the lines on them so straight? That's so weird. I think... I could be wrong. Well, they just got I think they're belted Galloways. Oh, oh, you know kinds of cows. I know kinds of cows because my father-in-law is a cattle farmer. But I, I just think because of the belt, the, yeah, the line around the middle, so it's an, e belt it's an easy one to remember. <laughs> very, very cute. These will be the devil's humps, and then the, that that will be the very top of the mountain, just up there. These are the devil's humps. I believe so. Yeah. They don't even see that evil. <laughs> they don't. They don't even seem that evil. They don't seem slightly like malicious at all, or even like having naughty intentions. <clears throat> To be fair, this would be a good place to do like satanic rituals and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> These are graves, apparently, of Viking leaders that were uh, vanquished oh. by the Chichester locals. <laughs> Just regular yeah. posh people who were like, we won't be having any of that. Yeah. I kind of feel like <laughs> if some Vikings came and tried to take over and you killed them, you'd, you'd just chuck them in the river. Why would you? You know what? Now that they we killed these Vikings, they were valiant enemies. Let's perhaps. stick them up there on that hill. Or is it kind of like, um, it's like, oh wait, they were famous. It's kind of like in Zombieland where he kills Bill Murray on accident. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh sh no, <laughs> shit. <laughs> these are the Vikings. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Very top of the hill is right that way. Okay, let's do it. They really are cute. I do want to cuddle one, but I don't want to do any think repercussions. They like that. No, I'm sure they don't. See, I love this. I mean, it, it, if it keeps coming this way, it means we're going to get wet. But I love seeing the rain coming. Yeah, and just it's, being like, where well, it sucks where those people are, and they don't know that it's great everywhere else. <laughs> I love it though. I, I, I want to get soaked by this. I want to just come and just. Just I mean, watch it as it, we're as it probably rolls over driving us. through it, so you yeah. could do. Yeah, it's unavoidable. <laughs> yeah. It's Shoes off at the door. That's going to be great. Damn. I mean, that was going to be a hard one to miss walking backwards and filming up here. <laughs> we haven't managed to do it oh, with our poor full Barry eyes. Has stepped in cow muck. Oh. Keeping your eyes down. I'm looking for mushrooms. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> we got cow patties and everything. Come on. <laughs> that was a big pile of cow shit. Yeah. Yeah, it was I mean, so I have seen cows, you know, but like... these cows really shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they're in the middle of like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't expecting all that. <laughs> oh, babe. <laughs> Criminy. <laughs> this little dance. I think this is just the top. This is it. This is the trick point. Oh, yeah? It can't be because that ground is higher. It's definitely <laughs> higher. Okay. That's your trick point there. So... <laughs> For our, our, our shot. We made it to the top of a thing. It's done. Ticked. Tick. <laughs> Amazing. So, what would you say the highlights of your career have been? What would you say the, the, the at what point did you go, ah, made it? Um, it's a good question. I'm not very good at doing that generally because every time you make it to a thing, there's another thing, isn't there? Every time you get to the top, there's yeah. always something you're like, well, that's higher. Yeah. Why don't I want that? that and then we'll get there and be like, right oh, there. actually. Yeah. See, this is, this, is, this is ambition. See, full of metaphors. Yeah. I find a lot of time it's, it's only when you look back that you go, oh, that was a moment. Wasn't yeah. It? A lot of the TV milestone things, I didn't grow up with an understanding of what they meant. So, so Live know? at the Apollo so, like, was like Live at the Apollo show. was yeah. like, was a show that paid me a good chunk of money. And yeah, I was like, yeah. that was a nice paradigm shift for me that way. Yeah. And that was huge. But like, at the time I was like, okay, cool. And yeah, I didn't yeah. realize that it was like, 
the thing. Sure. You know, until afterwards. So yeah. that was definitely a thing. And it was cool to be able to come back and host that yeah. then to be like, that's significant. I'm introducing these yes. dudes. Yeah. And I'm like, this is pretty swell. And having them go, because I, I, that struck me doing that show and doing it with somebody like Larry Dean, mm. who is young yeah. and grew up watching it. Like it would first have been on the TV when he was a teenager. So for him, yeah. it was a genuine thing of, this has been a dream come true. Yeah. I mean, every so often it's like a venue. Like it's like, uh, I mean, it was a charity thing, but I did a charity thing at like the Palladium. Sure. There you go. And Playing I was just like, yeah. Liza's been here. <laughs> Trudy's been here. Now I'm here, you know? And sometimes it just wigs you out that like you're stand, you know, especially theaters too, because they just have all of the ghosts and all of the like yeah. old stuff that I've come to know. Like there's something about a theater that feels yeah, yeah. like, oh, this is a robe. Like I, it doesn't matter if it's a new theater. There's something about it where it's like you're backstage, everything's like mm. weird and dim and then, and you see, oh, there's a rake and, and you just go like, oh, okay, this mm -hmm. is it. And there's something about that whenever I've walked into a new theater setting that's like, oh, okay, I got it. Like I opened for Rob Delaney like two, three years ago. And like I saw him back in the States and just was like, you're the funniest person I've fucking ever seen. And then I was like, hey, you're a really big fan. Or like legit a month ago, I did a gig that uh, Dylan Moran was, uh, you know, headlining mm -hmm. and I watched him on TV in America yeah. ages ago. And then it was like, I was still trying to be cool. It's like, hey, so you were funny. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, oh, okay, whatever. But it was still weird to do that that to another comic backstage mm. but like those things you know i did a podcast and jennifer sanders was there and i was just like right. yeah yeah and i was just like i'm i'm sorry we can't underestimate the fact that like you fucking did it like even as a female comedian in america it was french and saunders that's it do you mm. know what i mean like yeah. that was like oh okay you could do it that like i don't know and i feel like i've been able to meet far more of those people here mm -hmm. just because i guess there's less pretense and there's less sort of like layers oh here's the thing when i was doing my show in edinburgh on a bus like you do and then emma thompson and her daughter came to see my show on a bus and like there's nowhere to be because like there's this, this much of a square yeah, yeah the bob's blunder bus that was right, right okay, by yeah. potter row right yeah, so yeah. everything it's like in a, like the sort of like thrust right so uh -huh. there's chairs rows here rows here one row here you're here people come onto the bus to your show you're standing at the mic there's nowhere else to go mm -hmm. and just like hey welcome in and she walks up on the bus like hi and i was like hi the fuck like mm -hmm. <laughs> things like that you know that just make you go like how did you hear about my show you know mm -hmm. like why do like, do you ever take for granted the fact that like you saying something means anything <laughs> you know it's like i've been doing it for so long for it to mean nothing to pretty much anyone and now suddenly it matters and like the 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 transition happened out there yeah nothing changed in here so it's just weird to kind of catch up to the perception of who you are, what it means. I don't know. I mean, maybe at some point you do. This is proper top of the hill philosophical. <laughs> this is, this is, we will, see, we wouldn't get this kind of chat at, down if just we were at just doing cars. a Zoom chat. That's true. This is not, I gotta become self-sufficient because jokes aren't gonna pay the bills anymore. <laughs> Well, I mean, are they not, or is it just jokes in a room aren't going to pay the bills anymore? It's the only kind of jokes I do. I don't, I don't Whatever, you got jokes line. on an this, iPhone? This is it. <laughs> I'm retraining as a YouTuber. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs>All right. Okay. Well, let's head down then. Yeah. That jacket's coming back out, eh? Uh-huh. Now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I was going to say, it's, you're going to be very, very moist by the end of this. Whoa. Oh, nice. Look at that. Holds itself up. So you started very young then. Okay. This is hail. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's mad at us. Hail, hail, rock and roll. <laughs> it's hail, it's also already off. Fuck. Well, the great thing about hail is it kind of bounces off you before it really gets you wet. Yeah, I think this is that combination where it's the worst of all possible worlds. Because... I hope this has really encouraged you to come out and... Uh, <laughs> continue hill walking. Yeah. I come mean, maybe I'll wait till May. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's like mad. <laughs> You know, that thing I said about I really want that to hit us now. Yeah, I know. Okay. I was like, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> it moved faster than you thought. 
Oh, I think I we're. I was going to go past us. I tell you, it's about to. <laughs> you can already see the, the clear weather behind us. Uh huh. Oh my God, that's hilarious. And like we're in one of those ripples, you know, where it's like yeah. it got dark and then light and then dark and then light. Like we're going to go through those, all of them. Look at that. Look at that absolute unit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and just like that, it was gone. I mean, don't talk so fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Is that another way of saying don't speak too soon? Yes, it was. <laughs> don't talk so fast. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You talk Words for a don't living. come out of my face the way they used no, to. No, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> don't. It's like you've hey, just learned don't English. You don't you tell you so with the words speeding by. <laughs> uh. A tense for your thinks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, precisely that. <laughs> oh my God. Now I'm alarmed at the rate at which I'm um, decelerating in progress as a human being. Like, I'm just in my early 40s, but my God, everything's falling apart. Like, oh, that, that thing of just re re reaching for words and stuff? For, like everything, words, names of people, just like an ability to get out of a couch. I just, mm. <laughs> like, I don't know, like a week ago, I had a back spasm trying to pick up my cat. Wow. And I was like, oh, fuck, this is over. You know, it feels like, it feels like the minute a warranty expires on something, like mm -hmm. there was a 40 year warranty on this. Yeah. And yeah, boom, there's no upgrade. Gonna be super careful now. Whoa! That's not super careful. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was fucking hilarious. Okay. okay. I'm gonna be so careful. <laughs> And then, okay. and then a snort laugh, <laughs> just for good measure. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> that happened. Meanwhile, I look like I've been to a really cool festival. <laughs> I really haven't. <laughs> you're, you're very mucky now. Yes, I, feel I am. Like, I feel like that could be a whole other category of internet video. <laughs> I could maybe catch this you in on. This is the beginning of my OnlyFans account. Yeah. <laughs> hey. There's a whole whole load of other tags now that people could search for this, uh, this video. <laughs> Dirty comedy. <laughs> <laughs> God. Do you think uh, this could be the start of a, of a long hill walking <laughs> career for you? Have I? Have I Wet your appetite. This won't be the last hill I walk in this country. How about that? Next time, next time when you're on tour, you're in a town, you I'm know, like, and you, you, you know what? I'm so glad I brought my gear with me because yeah. I think I'm gonna do a nice hill walk.